everyone, I'm Jesus Smith. Dave Scottwood is off tonight, but with me instead is Harold Enos. The Tops news story tonight. 30 llamas broke out of a tractor trailer truck stopped on the side of the highway and killed 80 civilians. What a tragedy. But first, we're going to go live to an AIDS benefit where a poor boy is making his final wishes. We're here today with Billy Stevenson, <coughs> who has just found out that he has AIDS. Billy, how do you feel about having AIDS? <coughs> well, really, uh, it's, it's, it's a terrible disease, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm dying, it's horrible, you know, little boys get to go out and play, and like the grass and stuff, and I can stay inside, so sick. <coughs> well, how did you get AIDS? Well, it was, I was going to get my tonsils pulled out when uh, they had to do a blood transfusion. And then uh, they mixed up the blood they were supposed to give me with AIDS blood. And that's how it AIDS. Oh. <coughs> you seem to be very <coughs> pale. Are you <coughs> sick? Yes, I'm very sick. Uh, the AIDS is slowly taking over my body, you know. It's just... Is it contagious? <laughs> no, no, AIDS isn't contagious at all. The only way you can pass it is through blood. Okay. <coughs> well, Billy, how would you feel if we got you $23 for your AIDS benefit? Uh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, and we even got you someone to sing you a song. Billy, I brought you this guitar and a song so that you'd feel better. I once knew a boy who had AIDS. His name was Billy, and he had AIDS. I hope this song, you'll like it a lot, will help you get better in so much time. Good job, Billy. Keep going. <coughs> Gee, thanks. That was super touching. Ah, <coughs> uh, uh, in um, in other news. other news, Arnold Schwarzenegger has been recently found out that he has another child with a Mexican maid. We now go live to an Austrian in the, our town. Thank you, Jesus. And now we go to a, a local Austrian who has his own ideas on this affair. So, sir, how do you feel about Arnold Schwarzenegger's new Mexican maid affair? Well, like, it's like a shame to the Austrian community, you know? Because, like, it's like gross. Like, why would an Austrian, like, the sexy, like, smooth people be with, like, this ugly, homeless maid from, like, the Mexicana world? It's just, like, a disgrace to, like, the Austrian people. And it's just, like, I'm just so saddened that he would, like, stoop down his level to like the Mexicanos, just like Ross. How many maids do you think that he's actually done? Well, hopefully just this one. Because like the maids, they like the sweepy sweepy people, you know? They're like very dirty. It like, like, uh, like some of the women have like the mustache. It's like, it's like gross, like who would do that, you know? Like, it's disgusting, it's like nasty. Like, they look like a man, but it's actually like the woman. And it's just gross. So I'd like, hope is that he would only do like one tops, like, but it's still nasty. It's gross. So, do you think you would ever do that? 
But like, if I was like super hammered and like it shaved its moustache, then like I might be tricked into thinking that like the maid was like maybe like a little bit like pretty. But like I'd have to like be like uber hammered before I like got into the same bed as like the Mexican maid. They like fat. How will Arnold Schwarzenegger's new affair affect the Austrian community? Well, it's like horrible, you know, because like the people of Austria are now going to be shot of as like these people who just like sleep with like anyone that comes near them. Like we used to be shot of as like the people that could like sing and like was that was about it because like that was the only thing that came out of Austria like was the sound of music. But like other than that, like now we're going to be sort of as oh Austria, that is the kind of people that like sleep with like the Mexican maids. Well thank you for your time, Mr. Uh, Austrian man. Reporting to you live from Havanovich Square, this is Ivana Dick. Back to you, Jesus. Guys, we're still on. Oh. Uh, um, in other news, a Bigfoot has been spotted in the vicinity of Makeout Point. There, teenagers have been said to have been violated by the mysterious creature, and some have even reported that he has been chasing them through the streets. Some people have even caught him on video. However, we have not been able to gain such footage. So instead, we go to a different story. At the Harson County Jail, an inmate and a corrections officer have been having an unlawful relationship, sexually and emotionally. For more information, we go live now to our own action reporter, Phil Myhole. Phil? I am here today with Richard Head, who has been caught with a corrections officer doing some very inappropriate things. Richard? What did you do with this man? Well, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I would sit in my jail cell and talk about what life would be like after you know, jail. And uh, he would just sit there and make passionate butt sex until I would moan so loud that we would wake up the other jail. Why did you choose this CEO over any of the others? Well, it wasn't me that chose him, it was him that chose me, you know? Like, he would just come in, just like such a polite gentleman, you know? We would just talk, and eventually one thing got to another, and we would just have butt sex. And then he'd be giving me rusty trombones, and, you know, uh, we'd be doggy styling it. And, you know, just like every Kama Sutra book, like we bought the Kama Sutra book, and we just tried out everything. It was like, it was an interesting experience when I was glad I met him, but I can't wait to see him next time. Well, seeing as he'll be going to jail for a couple of years, do you think you'll still be having sex with him? Well, if that's true, then hopefully I'll be getting a jail cell with him. That would be nice. Yeah. It'd just be like living together. It would be. We'd like furnish the little, furnish our jail cell. Did you ever 
think about having butt sex with any of the other inmates? No, no, I believe in a monogamous relationship. He was a man. Well, this has been Fill My Hole. Um, back to you, Jesus. That was, uh, that was interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And after that, we'll have the full story on the llama tragedy. Stay with us. What type of shoes are those? Because these pebbles are really hurting my feet. Nike, just do it. Hey Michael, good job. Thanks. Pepsi, for a refreshing taste. Hey, it's Gus from the Nice Dice. You're gonna be saying nice every time you use this baby. Let me show you how this baby works. It has titanium steel little blade things that will cut anything except for solids. All you have to do is untwist this little plastic cover in order to open up the Nice Dice. Yeah, that's nice. This baby can cut anything. Applesauce. That's some nice applesauce. Look how easily it gets cut. This baby will even cut pudding. You know how hard it is to cut pudding. It's like all puddingy, you know? Look at that stuff. That's all gunky. Old people will probably choke on it or something. But look, the nice dice fixes it right up. Look at that delicious pudding. I can eat it with my fingers. That is like delicious. It's like so good. This thing can even chop up water. You know how hard water is to chop up, right? I mean, just like, look at this, look at that, that's amazing. So what are you waiting for? Pick up the phone and order this thing already. You could have it, like, in your house for only two easy payments of twenty nine ninety nine. So call us at 1-800-NICE-DICK or visit us on the web at itssonice.com. You, you probably won't regret buying this thing. I promise you. Actually, I don't. You're gonna be saying nice every time you use this baby. Welcome back. We now go live to Ivan Vashinyu with the full story on a llama tragedy with Farmer McFreely. Ivan? Hello. I am Ivan Vashinyu. I am here talking today to Farmer McFreely, who has recently lost all of his llamas in a freak llama killing accident. So tell me, Farmer. What happened to your llamas? Well, uh, damn, damn, damn llamas, they, they were in the truck and then they, then they, then they went down the street and then they got hit by a truck. Uh, one was in my heart, in my heart right here. How touching. So, Mr. McFreely, how did they get out of their cage? Oh, those are some smart girl llamas and they're gonna have like some, sun, some thumbs or something and they'd open up the door and they'd bust it right out. What a riveting tale. So, Mr. McFreely, tell me, how many llamas got killed? Well, only one died. Uh, but that, that one, that one was right here in my heart. It, it really touched me. It was that one llama. Mr. McFreely, what will you do now without your supply of llamas cut short by one very special, apparently, llama? Well, I might just like sell all of them or, or even just kill them all and, and just sell the fur and, and make some money and go buy some pot or do something. Well, that sounds like a good idea. When you get the pot, call me. This has been I've been watching you. Until next time, I've been watching you. Back to you, Satan. I mean, Jesus. Dude, that sucks. It is terrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Well.
Well, we now go live to a scientist who believes that a meteor will wipe out all life as we know it on Earth. I'm Dick Dental speaking today with Professor Maple about his new discovery of a meteor that will be heading for Earth. So tell me, Professor, how soon will the meteor be here? Well, due to my calculations, it should be about three to two at the most. So we don't have very long to live. Two years, that's right around 2013. Does that mean that the old Mayan prediction could come true? That is very possible. And because of the Mayans, they might have even known that this meteor was coming. So, maybe. Maybe. We do know that they were very good astrologists. So what exactly did you see when you stared into that uh, microscope? Well, I was looking up, and I saw this giant metal-looking rock that had lots of luster, luster and lots of metal in it. It looked very shiny. Were you scared then, or did you not realize what you were seeing? I had no idea whatsoever what it was. Did you think it could be in, like, anything in the world, or did you have an idea that it could be in media? I definitely had a possibility in my mind that it was a meteor, but that might not have come true. So, when did you first spot the meteor? I first spotted the meteor about eight days ago, and have been studying it ever since. What have you learned from studying the meteor? Uh, I have learned that in about three to two years, uh, scary thought. Well, can I take a look at this video for myself to see if it actually is real? Of course. Okay, let's go take a look at it. This was the telescope that I used the first time I saw the meteor. But once I saw that it was actually the meteor, then I moved up to a higher scale telescope, which I cannot let you view today because it is not in my possession. Okay, well, you don't mind if I take a look. Uh... Oh my god! It's coming right for us! Well, thank you again, Professor Maple, for showing me this very scary sight. Well, this has been Dick Dental speaking with Professor Maple. Back to you, Jesus. Well, hopefully those meteors don't hit us. Yeah, but it probably will. On a lighter note, we go live now to Afghanistan, which has just been hit by tsunami. And Andy Turbin with the full story. Andy? I really have to wear this stupid thing? I mean, I get that we're in Bakalaka Daka land, but it's like ridiculous. Dude, we're on the air. Oh, shit. Uh, hi. I'm Andy Turbin. I'm talking here today with a terrorist. I mean, uh, an Arab who has recently lost his house to the tsunami. Hello, my name is Osama Jihad. I lost my house and my wife, but they did not lose my God. That is the one most important thing in my life. So how did you feel when all that stuff just got taken away from you by the giant tsunami? Oh, I was okay because I still had my God. Well, were you at least happy that this area was getting some water? I mean, it is dry as hell out here. I don't care much for the water. I just love my goat. Well, it is- Oh my god, the tsunami! Oh my god, my goat! I hope he's still alive! Oh no! Dude, those were like 20 foot swells. I'm sure they'll be shredding 10 for Allah. Well, that's it for the 6 o'clock news. I'm Jesus Smith. And I'm Harry Enos. Good night. And don't forget to tip your bus boys.